G'day, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me, and today I'm talking about potteroos. A potteroo is a small species of macropod. A macropod is the family, and the word macropod means large footed. All the kangaroos have big feet, and the potteroo sits in that family. They're full grown and only this size. And let's have a look at the external features of a potteroo. Now if we start at their head, they've got a really thick nose, much thicker than let's say a bandicoot. They use that to bury it down into the dirt, but it also has a great sense of smell. Now their vision, it's not great, but it's not bad. When you live this far off the ground, you normally don't need that greater eyesight. Sense of hearing is really well developed. You've got big ears to catch that sound. Now their body, uh, and their fur is really basic camouflage. They live in wet eucalypt forests and they blend in by having a brown coat with all of the environment. Now they've got a tail and that tail is used for two things. One, it's counterbalance when they hop and they can lean back on it and rest on it. The potteroo I'm specifically talking about is the long-nosed potteroo and it lives in Eastern Australia. Now, it normally lives in wet eucalypt forests and in those forests, it's nocturnal. It's awake through the night time, that's when it feeds, that's when it breeds, that's when it interacts. And through the day it sleeps and they take shelter in things, little nests. So against a tree like this, or a grass tussock or a hollow log, they'll build a nest. And so they'll carry little bits of debris into the nest, grasses and soft ferns, and they hide themselves. So they can normally see out, and I've spotted them where there's some little beady eyes poking out of that nest, but they're really well camouflaged, or really well hidden. The potteroos, are really known as solitary. They live by themselves, but you will have colonies. So there is social interaction, but typically they sleep by themselves every day. They forage for food by themselves. The colonies will be comprised of a male who has a territory and females overlap that territory. Multiple females will overlap, but they are a solitary species. Potteroos, like all marsupials, have a pouch. Now at the right time of year, the male and female mate. And when they do, the female is only pregnant for less than a month. That's right, less than 30 days. And she gives birth to a tiny little potteroo the size of a jelly bean, even smaller. And that, that little jelly bean crawls up into the pouch and it attaches to mum's teeth. They normally only have one joey at a time. And when that joey's born, it's totally pink. Its arms aren't developed. Its eyes are covered over by skin. Its ears are folded down onto its head. But inside the pouch, that's where it grows, that's where it develops. And in a few months, you'll see a little potteroo looks exactly like mum, hopping alongside mum because it's now too big for the pouch. What do potteroos eat? Now, that question is a really important one because when they search for their food, they do a really important environmental role. Now their food is truffles, mushrooms, and fungi that all live under the surface of the earth. So they constantly dig and dig and dig. Now while they're finding those foods, the environmental role they play is they're a little mini ecosystem terrestrial engineer. Now what does that mean to be a terrestrial engineer? Now, every time they dig, they're turning over the forest leaf litter. When they turn the leaf litter over, it helps it turn faster to dirt. And that means we could have less fire load, less fuel for fires to burn. But also when they dig those holes, they're aerating and oxygenating the soil. And they're also dispersing seeds. Seeds fall off a plant, they hit the ground, they're waiting to germinate, but they need to be buried. And the potteroo does that. It's a really important environmental role. Potteroos fall in what's called the critical weight range. Now in Australia, that critical weight range is between 500 grams and five kilos. So it's animals about this big. Now, I mentioned the critical weight range because Australia has the worst mammal or marsupial extinction rate on Earth. Now, why do we have that? We have it because of the introduction 200 years ago of the feral fox and the feral cat that came with Europeans to Australia. Now, our little potteroos didn't have predators like fox and cat. They had devils and quolls, and the fox and cat are entirely different. So potteroos are facing extinction because they are prey to the feral species like the fox and the cat. Now sanctuaries like Aussie Ark, we work in a couple of capacities with potteroos. We keep an insurance population. What does that mean, an insurance population? 
Well, we keep it there that if the worst case unfolds in the wild and they go extinct, we haven't lost them because we've got them safe. And secondarily is we breed in that insurance population and with all the little joeys, we then put them into big sanctuaries. And the sanctuaries are fenced. But it's not like captivity that you would imagine, a little enclosure. The fences are 10 kilometers long. And the fences don't keep the potaroos in, they keep the fox and cat out. Because where we have a fox and a cat, we don't have potaroos. Two bits of homework for today. Now I've mentioned that potaroos are ecosystem terrestrial engineers because they turn over so much dirt. Now there was a recent study and I saw some news articles on it. So I want you to search for how much dirt does a potaroo turn over each year? Now, even more interesting, it's the size of an animal. So the potaroo turns over the amount of dirt that equals another animal, and it's a big animal. Try and find what it is, you'll have to Google it. Next, I want a picture of a potaroo in its environment doing what it does, searching for its food, mushrooms, truffles, fungi, and in a wet eucalypt forest. That's your homework for today. And that's all for now, see you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. Uh, this is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.